Hey folks, Doc here. Long time no video. Uh, it's been a few weeks uh, and that's because I've been busy and I've been away. Uh, many of you are aware that uh, I spent a week in the United States. I went down to Pensacola for a week uh, and it was, it was quite a good experience. Uh, I spent a weekend driving down, uh, stayed in Kentucky, Louisville in fact, overnight on the way down and on the way back up I spent a night in Virginia. And uh, I had a hell of a good time. Saw a lot of sights and a lot of scenes. Enjoyed some beach. Caught a shark. And just generally had a ball. Anyways, that sort of took me out of videos for a little bit. And uh, I did some shoot some video with some interesting people while I was down in the States. And uh, we're going to have to reserve that for a couple other videos. Uh, for now, I thought I'd do a bit of an acquisition update for you. Some things that I've acquired in the last couple of weeks. Um, and just generally show you what I've got, because uh, there might be some neat ideas to be had. So stick around and I'll step you through this. Okay, so those of you that are following me along on the Sprockets Garage Facebook page, you're aware that I picked up this dude's Alice the other day. Free. Yep. Completely. And it's intact, running, driving, mowing, whole shoot and match. This is a model 1613. It's got a hydrostatic transaxle that I'm drawing a blank on. I'll get back to that. And a 12 and a half horse Vanguard. Let's get the hood open. There you go. Cute little vanny, isn't it? But it's a vanny, and it seems to be in good order. Runs without smoking. Purrs like a kitten. Uh, I had to stick a battery in it. And not much else. A little bit of carburetor love. I killed the anti-afterfire solenoid. And uh, that's about all I've done to it so far. Checked the oil. The oil looked good. Didn't even change it out. Came with a full tank of gas. The gas was good. Cut the deck in the whole shooting match. So, believe it or not, we're actually cutting grass with this thing. So that was a lovely little freebie score. Amy called me up on her way home from work and said, I just spotted a free tractor, and I said, oh, do tell. Next thing you know, I'm over at the side of the road with my sprinter, and a guy got there two minutes ahead of me with a trailer. So I said to the guy, well, geez, I guess he beat me to it. And he jumped on the tractor, and he turned the key, and the solenoid clicked. And he said, oh, I guess it needs work. He says, you're welcome to take it. So I did. Oh, yes, and the transaxle is made by Eaton. Just came to me. Let's see if I can get under this thing. Just give you a bit of a glimpse at it. As you can see, it looks really interesting. Apparently it's got internal wet brakes. And I don't know much else about it other than by all accounts, they're, uh, they're quite reliable. I was talking to some guys on the Facebook group, and this is apparently a rebadged Simplicity. And a couple of the guys I talked to said they've never ever had any problems with these transaxles. So, for the first time in well, a couple of years, I'm mowing with a tractor again. Didn't cost me anything. I like it. This little gizmo on the table here is a recent acquisition. I'm going to thank my pal Jared for this. He scored it for me. And that is a smog pump off an older Mercedes. They were used for emissions control and they pumped air into, I guess, the exhaust system to try and get, uh, you know, extra hydrocarbons burnt off before they left into the atmosphere. I have to admit, I don't know too much about these systems because, frankly, I don't care. It's an interesting little device. It's got uh, an electromagnetic clutch on it, much like the air conditioning pump in your car. Feed it 12 volts, it locks up. I've already checked that out. That's cool. But what it basically amounts to is a small centrifugal supercharger. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, that's right. I am going to be supercharging a small engine with this and see what happens. Now because of this clutch, 
Um, I might have to feed it 12 volts all the time just to get it to pass enough air to keep the engine running even at idle. I'll have to experiment with it and find out. But this was like a $30 gamble or whatever it was just to try because I've always wanted to try. So there you have it folks. Look for a supercharged project in the future. Now, also under the heading of forced induction, what we have here is a sequential twin turbo setup off a of Mazda RX-7. And I get to thank my good friend Randy for this. What we have here is a couple of smallish turbos that by all accounts, from what I can tell, are in excellent shape. The bearings feel great. There's no detectable play in them. And when a man offers you two free small turbochargers, you take them. So, as you guys are all well aware, I do plan to turbocharge the diesel weasel. And I had planned to purchase a small turbocharger off the interwebs. And I think my buddy Randy just saved me about 300 bucks. Because looking at the size of these things, I think I can make a go of it. So if I take the assembly apart, grab one of the turbos off it, and do a little fab work, I believe I'll have my forced induction. So that's a great little score there. Brought that sucker all the way back from Pensacola. Thank you, Randy. I got these cool little eggs from my buddy Chris at City Slicker Builds on YouTube while I was passing through Ohio. Size marked on the sidewall is 4x10, and I think I figured they were just under 20 inches tall. I think I measured them at about 19. Uh, we won't get into the fact that the sidewalls and the tires are painted. <clears throat> but they look like they could be pretty useful to me. Uh, 4 inches wide, you know, 10 inch rim size, approximately 20 inches tall. You know, nice aggressive egg pattern on the front. Um, are kind of reminiscent, a slightly smaller version of what I've got on the front end of Suburban Commando. And uh, God knows I've come to love pizza cutter eggs on the front of my tractors. They steer incredibly well. So thank you Chris for the great tires. This here is a Peerless 820. The same transaxle I've got in Fugazi. And this transaxle here, I actually purchased, God, I'm going to say a month and a half ago. And this transaxle went on a wild goose chase trying to catch up with me, and it didn't quite, so I caught up with it. <laughs> it's kind of a long story, but it was send money to Buddy, and have Buddy pick it up from Buddy, and bring it to another Buddy, and Buddy was supposed to bring it up to me when he came, but he didn't have room. Anyways, thanks to all the guys involved in making this happen, uh, I bought it from Chris at City Slicker Builds. And a big thank you to Doug from Keystone Motorsports on YouTube for dragging it across the state of Ohio to my buddy Jared's, who held on to it till I could pick it up. So for years I tried to get an 820, and I couldn't find one to save my skin. And now I think it's starting to rain. Now y'all know when the doc says to you, it's raining. It's raining parts. That means that something that I went through a drought on, something that I couldn't find, all of a sudden is in abundant supply. So, you guys saw that, you know, I went for a long time without being able to find an 820. Got some 820s happening. And, uh, here's some more rain I want to show you. Ready for this? Brace yourself. Alright. You all know I picked up this all-wheel steer Noma. doesn't look like much but it's got that steering transaxle right right hold on yep yeah number two and three and four that's right four all-wheel steer transaxles and for the various people that helped make that happen I mean, you know, ain't nothing free. I paid for stuff. But I'd like to thank Luke, Jamie, and Jared, all of them for playing parts, in getting me four of these things. Now, you guys are going to have to watch for the obvious build coming up. 
And I'm going to go into some detail on these things later because out of them all, I've got a 920, two 930s, and a foot. And believe it or not, all the steering components are the same. Uh, they all outsourced from the same third party. So the components are all interchangeable. Four of them, it's raining. The last recent deal that I did, I did today. This one cost me a little bit. I think it was worth it, and I'll let you decide. You guys remember in the winter time, I acquired a 1970 Wheel Horse Raider 12. And on that Raider 12, uh, I put a Honda GX 340 11 horse, single cylinder air cooled electric start engine. You guys know I love my Hondas. And I had a set of used executioners I put on the back of that thing too. And that was a solid little tractor, limited slip differential, cast iron case. And I gotta tell you, when the fellow in question was asking me, you know, could he somehow acquire that tractor? I basically told him over my dead body. Then he started making offers. And you know what they say, everything's for sale for the right price. And I didn't think he'd have the right price, but he had the right price. So when I was saying it was raining, I traded it for an 820. And that. Can you all see that? Yeah, let's change that camera angle up a bit. Yeah. That, that is how you get a Honda out of Doc's hands. You're looking at that right. That is a 40, 4 zero horsepower Subaru air-cooled V-twin. It is 999 cubic centimeters in displacement, 999 cc according to the documentation. Yeah, we'll just call it a thousand to round that sucker up. This, this will give a guy wet dreams. Full pressure lube, 20 amp charging system, oil cooler. Electric start, of course. You wouldn't want to try and pull start this big. That shaft is one and seven sixteenths. Massive. And it's got a solenoid shift starter. It looks pretty darn clean. Let's see if I can zoom in on this label for you. Hope you can read it. I can't read that where the hell I'm standing from. I believe that says 999 cc. Serial number, blah. Mm, label on the starter just has a ID tag on it. Where's that other label? Oh, there it is. All right. Meets emissions regulations for 2014. I did a little research on these things. I believe this is a 2014 because of that certification sticker. This big block Subaru didn't come out until 2013. So it's no older than 2013. I'm pretty sure it's a 2014, so she's pretty new. This big, bad, beautiful big block came out of a wood chipper. And I guess it was one of those trailer type wood chippers. And, uh... The fellow I acquired it off of, Jake, told me the story that he got off it was that the trailer had been rolled and uh, they rode off the wood chipper. But of course the engine was still good so that got peeled out of there. He acquired it through some magic sources that I really need to get, oh my god. And uh, yeah, so we're talking about the wheel horse and I'm going, no I want to do this and no I want to do that. And then he said this. And I'm like, dude, you have my attention. So, I got him to throw in the 820 he was holding on to because I needed it to rain a little bit more, in my mind. And, uh, yeah, dropped off that wheel horse this morning. I'm going to miss it. It's a hell of a good machine. I think it was a good trade. Um, I, I know damn good and well that to buy this engine new would probably be about 2500 bucks, And even used, I mean, it's more than I would have sold the wheel horse for, I'm sure. So, you know, regardless of how he acquired it or paid for it or whatever the case may be, I'm considering this a hell of a good deal. I am very happy with this engine. Very happy indeed. Check that again. 40 horsepower. 4-0. This thing is sick. And of course the question on everybody's lips is, Doc, what are you going to do with a 40 horse engine? To be perfectly honest with you, this is like many, many things that I acquire on a fairly regular basis. I don't know yet. Uh, when the right deal comes along, you take it and you figure it out later. It is going to show up in something. Believe you me, I have to use this engine. I mean... 
40 horsepower. Seriously, you know, we've all got 16s and 18s and 12s and a couple of 21s and 22s and, you know, one or two that go a little bit bigger than that in our field of interest, shall we say, with the, with the mowers and such. But uh, 40 horsepower? Yeah, this thing's going to power the hell out of something. So as soon as I figure it out, you'll know. I can guarantee you that much. Naturally, the first thing everyone wants to know is, does it run? And of course, I can't go very far without trying to get it to start myself. It doesn't have a muffler on it. And of course, you know, the carburetor's half buried under all this stuff. And it's probably, yeah, there it is. It's got an anti-afterfire solenoid. So I've got to get things wired up to get it to actually start. But, you know, my first indicator as to whether an engine's any good is to fire a little ether down its throat, give it a crank, and see if it at least pops. So, we're going to do that. If I can get this screwdriver to fit in here. Yep, I'd call that good. 40 horsepower. Damn, this thing is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, there you have it, folks. There's my list of recent acquisitions. And as you've noticed, most of it I don't really have a solid plan for. Um, at least one of those 820s is going to be built up exactly like the one in Fugazi with the Dock Locker 820 set up in it, oil filled, whole shoot and match, the lock collars, and ready to go. Uh, so that if in the process of romping Fugazi I screw it up, I've got a direct swap in ready to go. Um, with the all-wheel steer transaxles, I've got four of them, and uh, I know I indicated that, you know, watch for the obvious build, and it's probably more obvious than you think. The fact that I've got four of them is due to the fact that, well, first off, I mean, it, it's raining, um, but also because parts are so expensive and hard to come by for those damn things. You know, I know I've got a bad U-joint on one of them, for example. This way, I'm guaranteed to have enough functional parts so that I can get two good working transaxles out of it. Uh, so there's definitely a 4x4 type build coming. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than you're used to seeing because you all know that when Doc does stuff, Doc goes off on his own damn pit, you know, trail. Good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, one of those turbochargers is going to end up on the weasel, I do believe. And the smog pump supercharger, i got to be honest with you, I have no idea yet. It was one of those, pick it up now, figure out what to do with it later. But yeah, I'm going to miss that sweet wheel horse. It's a beautiful machine. Uh, I hope Jake keeps it for more than five minutes. Um, but I was certainly perfectly willing to give that thing up for this monster. So, I've got some video clips that I want to show you uh, from my trip down to the States. We're going to do that in another video or possibly two due to length. We're not going to do that right now. I've got a pile of editing and swashbuckling through footage to do. So we're going to do that later. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for tuning into Sprockets Garage on YouTube, and until next time, take care of yourself. I got these cool little eggs from my buddy Chris at City Slicker Builds on YouTube. Frick. I got mushmouth again. Arrgh.